Who Let the Dogs Out? FFG did when they released the Flesh Ripper expansion for the Rune Wars Miniatures game. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Battlecast. In today's episode we're going to be doing an unboxing of the Flesh Ripper unit expansion for the Rune Wars Miniatures game. Now if you've seen my other two unboxings for this set of releases, you'll know that these are solid boxes. They're square shaped, unlike the usual rectangle shape, and they're solid, and I love them. So, no more about boxes. Flesh Rippers are awesome. Flesh Rippers look amazing. If I had to, you know, compare them to something, I guess I would compare them to the cavalry in other units. They've got three collective health, including the armor, and the other, in, you know, other cavalries have similar. Uh, the Death Knights have three, and the Dakon, I believe, have two. So yeah, about, you know, they're cavalry-like. Really amazing artwork on this box. Love the spined and very, you know, serrated tail. So what do you get in this box? You get four unpainted plastic figures, two movement trays, a command tool, a unit card, five upgrade cards, and six assorted tokens. Let's read about them. Tear the foe to shreds. Very Uthuk. Roving among the vanguard of the Uthuk hordes are the horrific flesh rippers, packs of ravening beasts born from the corruption of the Rue Darklands. With tearing jaws, slashing talons, and ridges of protective bone, these nightmare creatures are more than a match for the cavalry of the other armies. Enemies foolish enough to break and run soon discover their gruesome fate as the flesh rippers hunt prey. That's pretty accurate because these puppies are quick. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So first thing you'll notice that little flimsy insert that used to be in the box to give it structure is gone. So let's lay it all out before us. So here it is all before you, uh, pretty standard. Um, they all come in one bag, all the models, they're not separated. And I think I've confirmed this, but there are no new models for these. I'm pretty sure they're exactly the same as you get in the uh, Uthuk Army expansion. So, looking at the assembly here, pretty standard stuff. I'll go ahead and assemble and we'll talk about the figures. I do really love me some flesh rippers. Such a dynamic and animalistic pose. They really look like they're chasing you down to kill you, basically. Uh, FFG did a good job of minimizing how many pieces to put in. This fella, you just snap its head in. And on the other one, you put its arm in and just the top of its head in. There are a lot of mold lines on the back of the legs, on the back of the head, the arms, uh, on the tail. So definitely get out your, uh, your knife and polish them up. Um, but they are very nice. Some of my favorite models, uh, they did a good job. Now you also get some lore, which is very nice. I'm hoping one day that they'll create a art book with lore, um, maybe like including a revamped rule book, similar to that of uh, Warhammer. That would be very cool. Um, but in the meantime, there's the lore. I'm not really going to read it out here, but uh, for those of you who enjoy it, it's there for you. So the big thing, the big guy, is what are the cards about? And one thing you'll notice right off the bat is for this edition of releases, and hopefully for all the others thereafter, the upgrade cards have been increased in size. They are regular card size now, which is really nice because those flimsy little cards are not my favorite. They're hard to find, and I think this is just going to work a lot better. They're easier to sleeve, you know, why, like, the information on the unit card is so similar. I mean, I can almost remember them all by memory. But it's the upgrade cards where things get unique and, you, you know, have the text bigger just makes a lot of sense. So, let's get into it. So, you get one Flesh Ripper card. Here it is. Let's talk about them. 22 points for a single, f or for a two tray of Flesh Rippers. That's what you get in this box here and it has the unique upgrade slot. So how does this price compare to other uh, cavalry type units? So the Leonx are 
18 points for a two tray, and those guys have two health per unit. The Death Knights are 24 points for two trays, and they also have, you know, three collective damage absorption. And the Oath Sworn Cavalry are 20 points for two trays. So on the whole, the Flesh Rippers are the second most expensive next to the Death Knight. Now you can run these guys in a nine block, which is actually pretty interesting because you can only, the other only unit that can do that is the Oath Sworn as far as cavalry goes. The Leonks can have a maximum of six in a column shape and the Death Knights are the same, six in a column shape. So these guys, you can get three threat, you know, three deep, which is pretty terrifying. A true pack you could run with them. Let's talk about stats here. So they have just as much damage absorption, I guess you could say, as the Death Knights. And, uh, you know, because the Oath Sworn and the Leonks have two, um, one having two health, one armor, the other having two armor, one health. Um, and this works a lot better for the Uthuk because there are, as you know, Ravos dishes out a wound. So if he's hanging out with the Flesh Rippers, uh, dishing out a wound to them means a lot less than if you were dishing out the wound to, say, um, a Spine Thresher who has two armor. Um, so there you go. These guys roll three dice. That's very consistent for all the cavalry. Um, they have a Surge Plus. Choose an enemy engaged with you. It suffers damage equal to the number of surges spent, which when you're rolling two blue dice is pretty exceptional. I mean, um, now it is damage equal to. Uh, it's not like uh, hits or anything like that, but still, that's pretty good damage. Uh, before you reveal your command tool, you must perform a move one. So that's kind of what makes the Flesh Rippers the Flesh Rippers. They get a compulsory movement, which is very cool. Upgrade card time. Here we are. It is the unique card, Feeding Frenzy. So this is kind of one we've all heard about. When an enemy engaged with you loses one or more trays, for each tray lost, place one wound token on this card. For every three wound tokens on this card, you gain lethal one. This is a really interesting card. So the thing about the Flesh Rippers that's interesting is they're the only cavalry that can go three wide with six models. Every other cavalry will go two wide, three deep in a column formation with six models. And then you would need to run uh, the column tactics to achieve a threat of three with six models. Now the Flesh Rippers have the three wide six formation as you can see there. And that is quite important because you don't need an upgrade to have threat three. And furthermore, when you have column tactics, when you start losing trays, you immediately start losing threat. Whereas with these guys, you can lose three trays before your threat is impacted, which is quite devastating. So what does it look like to destroy a tray? Well, if you had three threat and you rolled the maximum hits of uh, one, two, three, four hits, which is 12 damage, and let's say you got the surges as well, uh, that would be a maximum of 12 damage, 14 damage. So that's actually an absolute ton of damage. Um, and therefore, you could very easily get some lethal extra on your feeding frenzy. However, in Rune Wars, which is a game of eight rounds, I sort of wonder how much lethal you'll get on them with this card, and if that would merit its investment. I sort of don't think so. The number of times in a game where I've had one unit kill, you know, more than three trays is, you know, it's not, it's not a ton. I mean, you know, every so often you get like a nine block, go kill a nine block. And if that was the case, you'd get three extra lethal on Feeding Frenzy. But I, it's hard to say if I think it's worth it. Um, yeah. Anyway, very cool upgrade card. You'd have to have some really nice flanking tactics and whatever, because it's only an enemy that's engaged with you. So if you kind of came in to polish them off, uh, that could be very good. Cool upgrade, unique slot. Uh, you can equip it right away because they're two block and have it. So there you go. I think if you had a six block, you know, three wide six block of these guys, then Feeding Frenzy might be good. Dead Sprint, unique card. This is kind of the card in my opinion. 
During your activation, you may increase the speed of your first movement by one or treat it as modified. Now I'll just have to double check here. Maybe let me know in the comment section below. But Dead Sprint says during your activation and the Flesh Ripper movement says before you reveal your command tool. So I believe the process of revealing is where you also, you know, cash in um, inspiration tokens and whatnot. And I believe that is part of your activation. So therefore, I think the, the speed that you gain from the before you reveal, um, you do get this dead sprint bonus, I would imagine, but let me know in the comment section below. Either way, what it allows you to do is it allows you to very nicely set up charges. So because you can modify a speed one with a turn, you could turn and charge for a massive amount with these fellas um, because their command tool is so fast, these guys move the farthest in the game. You can also increase the speed by one. So you could do a speed two straight, which is very, very good. So this card is exceptional for four points. It's pretty much a must have. Flank guards. While you're defending, enemies do not do extra or do not add an extra dice for flanking you. Okay, that's standard. Moment of inspiration. This is a great card to have, just as an upgrade card in general. You can exhaust this card to add a white dice. Good. When you're three wide, that could seriously hurt. When can these fellas get that upgrade? They can get it at just the four tray. So that's actually pretty good. Rank discipline. Uh, so you get precise. Fine. This is totally good when you're doing the four tray. And actually, hell, I mean, it, if you have this with the six tray, you're essentially a nine tray for quite a bit less. Well, not quite a bit less, actually. The difference between 63 plus four is, uh, what is that? 67. So at that point, you're really only like eight points less than the nine tray here. So hard to say if that's worth it. But, you know, if you're trying to pinch points, that might be the way to do it. And then we're back to Feeding Frenzy, so okay. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the dial now. And um, these puppies move quick. Every cavalry can move three at one. These guys do not have a move two on their primary, which most other cavalry do, but they do have a move unstable at five. So if you are lucky and you get four unstable runes, you're moving forward initiative five, which is the fastest. I'm I'm fairly certain, but it's luck, you know, it's luck based, luck of the draw. Um, then you have the move two extra modifier. So to put into perspective, if you have dead sprint and you have four unstable runes, you'll move two because of the dead sprint, four because of the unstable runes. And if you modify it with a two, uh, you can even move two farther. So that is a total of eight distance or two fours which is crazy fast crazy i mean your whole like the whole mat i mean if you deploy at range three and then you move two fours you'll pretty much be in their zone already uh, and that's quite shocking um you deploy these guys last and line them up with a group of archers you might be able to get those archers you know for sure round two so very very cool they can modify with a Panic Surge, so that combines well with their, you know, Lethal Surge Plus ability. Um, green Skill, uh, so that sucks. <laughs> green Reform, so, you know, I guess Rally Reform is not the worst action to do. Um, and Charge, of course, no speed penalty on the charge, attacking at Initiative 4. Very good unit overall. One thing to note is that they don't have a charge on a turn, which is very interesting. Uh, Definitely requires a bit more setup, but with the dead sprint, I think you can make that happen. Um, I think this is my new favorite cavalry. The Death Knights are super interesting, um, but when they come up against Ravos, they kind of just crumble because he just dishes out wounds and they die. So these guys are extremely resilient um, and so fast and pack quite a punch. So I'm definitely going to be using uh, some serious flesh rippers in my upcoming Rune Wars Battlecast, which is going to be coming out in uh, hopefully the following week. Um, that's going to be it for the video, though. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider supporting the channel by liking the video, leaving a comment below, or even subscribing to the channel. Until next video, I'll see you then. Thank you.